Hey there, thanks for joining me on Tropical Weather Impact. I'm meteorologist Peyton Malone in New Orleans. It is Monday, September the 8th. We are just days away from the official peak of the Atlantic hurricane season, and there's not a whole lot to talk about in the Atlantic Basin. The Pacific remains where all the action is, and a hurricane even nearing Hawaii. I'm going to be talking about that here in just a moment. We'll also talk about why the Atlantic is struggling, and maybe a couple of spots in the next one to two weeks uh, we'll be watching in the Atlantic. Atlantic Basin, but for now, not a whole lot going on out there. Let's start with this guy right here. This is Hurricane Kiko. It is sitting about 490 miles away from Hawaii. There is Hawaii and all the islands. Here is the hurricane. And it, what's interesting about Kiko is it's still a category two, 100 mile per hour winds, and it's sitting in relatively cool waters. Now it is really starting to fade and it's going to continue to fade as it passes just north of the islands. And so we don't expect any direct landfall impacts from Kiko, but it will create some rough seas, some rip current risks there for the islands uh, over in Hawaii over the next couple of days as it passes northeast of uh, our north of the islands over the past 12 hours. This went from an impressive major hurricane down to where you can see the eye begins to fade starts to move over those cooler waters and it shows you well that you do need warm waters to maintain a significant hurricane, but it's been taking its time winding down as it moves off to the north of the islands here. Here's what the water temperatures look like anywhere where you see this lighter shade. That's 79 and then 80 is where it's orange. And so you can have a hurricane when it's 77, 78 degrees as long as the upper atmosphere is healthy. All these things work in conjunction. But when you have the warm or warmer temperatures like 80, 81, 82, that's what you start to get our need to support a significant major hurricane three, four or a five. And so this is going to pass north of the island into the cooler waters. Now the waters do warm up out here, but you can see the official track keeps it north of Hawaii as we go throughout the next few days. So here we are this evening continuing to steadily move north of the islands. Here we are Tuesday morning. Here we are Tuesday evening. You notice it goes from a hurricane to a tropical storm and the wind filled with this stays offshore. Now there will be tropical storm conditions north of the islands quite a bit of ways north of the island. What you're seeing in or are in yellow here are tropical storm force winds. And so again, we're not expecting any direct landfall impacts. We're not expecting any uh, wind impacts from this that are substantial. And then there it is. It curves out to sea and should transition into a, a tropical depression by let's say Friday or so. So that's the official track. Again, the main problems with Kiko will be the waves. You can see in the green there, those are where your waves start to get over 15 feet closer to the center of this current hurricane. You're getting waves 20 to 30 feet. And so the waves are going to start to become a problem for the islands starting Monday night and into your your Tuesday. And so really into Tuesday and parts of Wednesday, you've got wave problems. You can see there for parts of the islands, you've got waves crashing over 10 feet or so. So maybe you're heading to Hawaii for a little late summer vacation and it's not going to be pretty there. At least the waves are not going to be conducive to be in the water through Wednesday and even Thursday. We've still got some waves, but then I think Thursday into Friday we start to see the improvements later this week looks a lot nicer out that direction. So that's what's happening in the Pacific. Here's what's happening in the Atlantic. Nah. Nothing zilch. I mean, we were tracking invest 91 last Friday and I was talking about how they were giving it a high chance of development and we weren't quite locked in with that. Well, wouldn't you know it? The Atlantic did what it's been doing all season, suppressed invest 91 and there's just not much left of it. That's about all that's left of that tropical wave traveling through the Atlantic very, very slowly, just not moving very fast elsewhere. There's been some upper level lows. There's been some showers and storms out here east of the Bahamas and we've continued to see this fetch of disturbed weather in the Gulf and up the East Coast. That is thanks to reoccurring cold fronts that have been stalling in these areas, and that's why we've had so much disturbed weather sitting just off the coastline of the Gulf and off the East Coast. Now we'll talk about why there is some low pressure developing in those spots, but elsewhere there's just not much to track. We still think this tropical wave is going to struggle for the rest of its life, at least what we're seeing right now, and then closer to home here in the Gulf waters. We actually do have a broad low pressure and a weak low pressure that's been forming right off the coast of Florida. And so you've been getting a lot of showers and some rain over off the coast of Florida here the past 
few days. I think that's going to continue. There's your low pressure. You can see it spinning there right off the east coast. This is the front right in here where you see the shift in wind. That's the old frontal boundary. That's the low pressure along the front, and you're just going to continue to see scattered showers with some thunderstorms in the Gulf the next few days. Now, I do think some showers will fly north of this low, and we may see a few showers Tuesday and Wednesday on the northern Gulf, but it looks like Florida and really into the central Gulf waters is where a lot of this disturbed weather is going to stay over the next a uh, couple of days or so. So let's talk about what's going wrong in the Atlantic. Not necessarily wrong for us, those who live along the Gulf Coast and the East Coast, but what's going wrong for these invests where they're struggling to form and it's the peak of hurricane season. Really strange that it's September the 8th and we are not tracking, let alone a name storm or a development potential and this is what we've got. So right now the Atlantic Basin in the subtropics further north the waters are warmer than normal. The waters being warmer than normal up here, they do create a bit of a stability issue for the area further south. And so right now, you probably have some sinking air over the main development region. We've had some dry air, but the stability, it's suppressing those thunderstorms. And if your thunderstorms can't flourish, it doesn't matter what the water temperatures are, you're not going to have thunderstorm activity to maintain itself and to try to form. So while our waters are warmer than normal up here, maybe that's actually helping us out here in the main development region. Now the Gulf waters, they're extremely warm. I mean, we haven't had a lot. We haven't had any big tropical system this season in the Gulf, no hurricane at least. And we've had showers and thunderstorms, but the water temperatures have been able to maintain their warmth and even be warmer than they normally are. I mean, some parts of the Gulf are sitting nearly five degrees above average, which is substantial when you're looking at water temperatures. And so we have the fuel with regard to water temperatures. We just don't have some other components to help out these systems and to help them flourish. Stability is the biggest problem right now in the Atlantic Basin, and that's a good thing. We want stability. Stability and the Atlantic not producing a storm on September 10th, which is the peak of the season, I think is indicative of what the rest of the season will hold. Now, I do think we're still going to see some storms form here later in September and early October, but for this season to be above average or maybe even right at average may be a struggle. And so it just shows you there's more to hurricane season than the water temperatures. There's more to hurricane season than El Nino and La Nina. There's so many other factors that go into uh, hurricane season. I think the big one right now is the stability across the main development region. Notice the cooler waters down here south of Africa. Notice the warm waters here. That's a stability issue right in here. And so that's why I think things are really struggling. So what are we going to be watching here as we head towards the peak of hurricane season? Well, again, we have this fetch of moisture and disturbed weather along that old frontal boundary. That's probably going to produce a couple low pressures. Not sure we're going to get anything substantial from that. We've also got another little disturbance that's been spinning here with some moisture. That's probably going to stay off the East Coast, and that's what's left of Invest 91. So I can put all this in motion, and you can see nothing really consolidating anything significant. If you watch here off the East Coast and off in the Gulf, you can see where you get some weak low pressures, but there's no substantial development. There's no substantial movement to those. We just continue to get burst of dry air across the deep south. So that's that's a win here. That also means not much rain in the forecast the next seven days. Watch Invest 91 and watch what's left over of this moisture down here associated with it. It travels off to the west very slowly. It's just not able to do much. Now, the one area closer to Central America and closer to the U.S. that models are sniffing out, they're not doing anything too wild with it. The GFS, of course, is throwing a hurricane in the Gulf next week, but we got to take that with a grain of salt. The GFS is often the system that uh, spins these things up too quickly. It gets a bit more excited and it's a bit more aggressive. There's a lot of models that don't show anything, but I do think if there's one area we're watching towards the, we'll say next week and the week beyond that, so heading into the third week of September, it's going to be right in here. And if we can get some disturbed weather, there's a potential. I mean, the water temperatures are warm enough. Wind shear is probably not going to be too bad. That would likely be the next spot we're watching. So the Northern Caribbean and the Gulf waters would probably be the next spot to really watch closely. And again, that's not going to happen until later next week. So we still have a solid seven days of no problems in the Atlantic Basin. So we count this as a blessing. We count this as however you call it. And the reason we call that a blessing is because it's about to be the peak of hurricane season. Officially, September 10th is what we calculated as the official peak. That's Wednesday. And well, we don't have anything we're tracking. And so we're doing good on that front. Now, September as a whole is the busiest month. 
October is often a busy month as well. And we've noticed that the past few seasons, October can sometimes be busier than August. And so here in New Orleans and Mississippi, we get past August and we think, okay, we're probably going to be okay. And for the most part, we've had many a seasons where our biggest storms are in August around here, but September can bring big storms. We've had some notorious storms in September. We've had some big storms in October. October, the North and really the eastern Gulf is where we start to see the attention shift. Florida really watches the tropics in October, but we've had hurricanes here in New Orleans in October too. And so it just caution you. We're not throwing any celebrations just yet for this hurricane season to end, but we are celebrating that there are no, are no tropical threats for the peak of hurricane season this week. So as we go through the rest of this week, there's probably not going to be a whole lot going on out there. Kiko is going to be traveling just north of Hawaii. Elsewhere, we're just watching these little areas of disturbed weather along these old fronts in the uh, Gulf and off the East Coast. We'll be keeping an eye on that, at least half an eye on that. That's going to do it for your Monday, uh, September the 8th, Tropical Weather Impact. I will see you right back here tomorrow with the latest updates.